Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and this week we're not actually going to talk about news at all. Uh, I'm going to do a full episode of a straight-up tech segment, and uh, the reason why is because I, I want to talk about one specific vulnerability. It's something that has been very prevalent on a lot of the tests that I've, I've performed uh, for organizations, and it's something that's been documented really well and talked about quite a bit over the last five to ten years, yet it still is something very neglected by a lot of organizations. Um, it's something that would allow an attacker to gain, uh, to actually escalate privileges within an environment fairly easily, um, you know, gaining access to user credentials. And it's something that I think uh, just needs a little bit more attention. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about what the vulnerability is, uh, how or how you could actually exploit it as a pen tester, and then also how to fix it uh, from the other side. So without further ado, the theme of this episode is Kill LLMNR and NBTNS. That's Link Layer Multicast Name Resolution and NetBIOS Name Service. We'll get right to those in just a moment. This episode is brought to you by Cybery.it. Uh, get the latest hacking and security training from www.cybery.it. Uh, if you want to uh, register for some of their training, you can go to the link below, tinyurl.com slash hntv-cybrary. As always, Hack Naked TV is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security. If you're in the need of a penetration test, vulnerability assessment, or any other type of security assessment for that matter, contact Black Hills InfoSec by sending an email over to consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com. Okay, LLMNR and NBTNS. LLMNR, as I said, was link layer multicast name resolution operating on UDP port 5355. NBTNS is NetBIOS on UDP 137. Both of these are, are enabled by, in the, by default in Windows. Uh, LLMNR came along with Vista. Uh, NetBIOS has been around a little bit longer than that, and both are very, very similar to DNS. So what are the differences between LLMNR, NetBIOS, NetBIOS and DNS? Um, so LLMNR and NetBIOS are pretty much the same thing. The only major difference is that uh, LLMNR also does IPv6 resolution, um, and NetBIOS doesn't. Uh, LLMNR and NetBIOS are different from DNS in that they don't actually use a specific server to resolve hosts. What they do is they actually broadcast to every host on the local subnet asking where a specific host is. So, for example, if you had a subnet that didn't have a DNS server and you wanted to resolve the host name of another host on the network, you could say, um, you know, you could just tip, do your typical browsing via like Windows Explorer and LLMNR and NetBIOS will try to find that host uh, by broadcasting to every host on the network. So, um, in a typical domain, um, you know, it's going to try DNS first, but if that were to fail, it might try LLMNR NetBIOS on the local net. The thing to, to remember about these is that they do not go past the local subnet, so it's really no good for any other subnets on your network. So, why kill them? Uh, well, one, they're very noisy. LLMNR and NetBIOS, if you just do packet capture on your network right now, you'll see probably a ton of traffic of LLMNR NetBIOS. Um, so you could, you know, limit a lot of CPU cycles, limit a lot of logs. Um, by just killing them. Um, <clears throat> in, a standard, in a standard Windows domain, DNS should be the one that's adequately covering name resolution anyway. Um, I mean, any, any host you want to look up should be resolved via D DNS. I'm sure there's going to be the, uh, the occasional system that might, you know, need some special assistance, but um, for the most part, you should be able to cover it with DNS. And the major, the major problem, the reason I really wanted to do this episode of Hack Naked is because they can be poisoned, um, enabling an attacker to gain access to user credentials, uh, and it makes it very, very easy to gain access to user credentials. Uh, so two, two tools to do that is uh, Spider Labs Responder, which we're going to demo here in a little bit, and uh, Metasploit also has a module to listen for LLMNR. And so essentially what you do during a poisoning attack is, as an attacker, you just have to be on the same subnet as the clients that you want to attack. Um, and the second that somebody on that subnet mistypes a server name or types in a, a server name that DNS doesn't recognize um, or doesn't know how to resolve, it's going to start broadcasting to all the local hosts. So if you're on that local LAN um, as an attacker and you have responders set up listening for those queries, um, you can answer them and say, hey, come over here. And when that happens, that system will create an SMB connection to your attacking system passing you NTLMv2 creds. Well, hashes, I should say, and usernames. So how does that look? Uh, well, Stern Security has this awesome diagram that I just um, had to throw in here because I think it looks great um, and really describes the process pretty well. So, step one, the victim, the typical employee of a network, tries to connect to a print server. They're just using Windows Explorer, trying to connect to a share on a print server slash us. But they, they, they happen to mistype it, so it's actually pint server, right? Um, DNS says, I don't know where that is. That's, that's not a host that we have. Um, 
So the client starts asking the local subnet, says, hey, any of you guys, are you Pint server? Um, so broadcast to every single host. If you're an attacker on that, on that LAN, you can say, hey, I'm Pint server. Come over here. Come connect to me. And the victim will be like, okay, cool. Here's, your, here's my credentials. <laughs> so let's see how this works. I'm going to set up a, a packet sniffer on my uh, Windows box here. Let's go ahead and start it okay, without saving. Um, I'm going to filter on specifically UDP port 5355. Um, so we only are getting our LLM and R traffic. Now, if we were going to try to navigate to a share. So let's say I want to connect to Pint Server slash C, the C share on Pint Server. DNS doesn't know where it is. LLMNR starts querying around. You can see it, IPv6 also asks for it. Um, and of course, it's not going to find it because it's not on my network. Now, if we come back over to our attacking system. So let's set this up a little bit. Let's pretend our Windows host is our typical employee Windows system on a standard Windows domain. Um, LLMNR and NetBIOS are enabled by, like they are by default. Um, our attacking system is going to be this Kali box here. Essentially, the attack is going to be that we walked up to an organization, plugged into a port on the wall, um, got an IP address, you know, provided that NAC didn't VLAN us off somewhere, um, and we can see that traffic from the other host. So let's go ahead and use Responder to set up some listeners. So with Responder, if you give it dash I, you can give it the interface that you want to listen on. And you give it dash WRF to start up all the services and do some fingerprinting on the host itself whenever it connects. Um, so you can see we've got a number of services listening. Responder does a lot, so um, we're just going to cover the LLMNR and NetBIOS portion of it today. But uh, you should look into it probably and check out all the, these different services that it does because it does um, DNS, SMTP, SQL Server, FTP, um, lots of fun stuff. So if we look at our NetStat now, we can see that we've got port 5355 UDP for LLMNR, we've got 137 for NetBIOS listening. Um, we come back over to our Windows host now. Let's say we want to connect to Pint Server 2. It's really supposed to be Print Server 2, but let's connect to Pint Server 2 and see what happens. We come back over to our attacking box. You can see we've got a hash. How about that? So Responder answered, answered the query for Pint Server 2 right here. It said, oh, hey, you want Pine Server 2? I'm right here. It was able to fingerprint that it's a Windows 7 box and provided our hash. We've got our username, Odin, and his password hash. It's an NTLM v2 password hash. So you could now go take this password hash and start cracking away at it if you wish. Um, so, yeah, that's the attack. Well, as you can see, these are two things we're going to want to kill off so employees of our company don't have their password hash is stolen very easily by just somebody listening on the network with a responder. <clears throat> so how do we go about killing these? Um, well, for LLMNR, it can be disabled with GPO, which is beautiful. It just open up your local computer policy, computer configuration, administrative templates, network, DNS client. You're going to want to enable turn off multicast name resolution. Now, the caveat here is test it out. Don't just go turn it off for everybody. Test it out on just a few hosts and maybe a subnet or two because there is a potential that you're going to break something. There might be some random service that actually uses LLMNR for some specific task. So validate, verify, make sure that um, you know do you do your due, due diligence and making sure you're not just going to kill off some random service um, by disabling LLMNR. Um, so just test it out. NBTNS. So how do we disable this? This one's a little bit more difficult because there's no no actual GPO for this, um, but Manually, this is the manual way. Um, you can actually go into uh, Network and Sharing Center, change the adapter settings, right click local area connection, click on properties, double click Internet Protocol version 4, click advance, open up the Winds tab, and then click on disable NetBIOS over TCP IP. Now that's a lot of work to do on every single host in your environment manually, so you're, you're probably not going to do that. Um, so if you actually look under the NetBIOS setting here, the default setting in, um, that, that's set by Windows is to use NetBIOS setting from the DHCP server, which <clears throat> if DHCP doesn't set anything for it, it's going to just enable it. So you can actually disable NetBIOS with DHCP, with, with, with your DHCP server, I should say. Um, and Microsoft actually has a pretty nice article on walking you through how to do that right here. The first link at the top, http colon slash tinyurl.com slash hntv dash netbios dhcp. Um, 
And if you look at the screenshot on the right here, you can see exactly what it looks like. So you just open up your, your DHCP scope options. Um, you're going to want to pull down the vendor class of Microsoft Windows 2000. And uh, there's, an, there's an available option of Microsoft Disable NetBIOS option. You just simply change the long value to 0x2, apply it, and you're done. The caveat is this is not going to be an immediate change. Um, your hosts will, uh, or well, the change will take effect after your clients get their new leases, their new DHCP leases, which I believe on a typical Windows domain by default is like eight days. Um, so if you want to wait eight days, by all means, do it this way. Um, there also is a script that Microsoft has that you can push via GPO um, that will also disable NetBIOS, and that's located at the second URL here. So the caveat um, to this whole thing is that you have to disable both of them. You can't just enable. You can't just disable LLMNR. If you disable LLMNR, NetBIOS will take over automatically, making your fix for this vulnerability null. Um, you're going to want to disable both services if you do this. Again, test it out. Make sure it doesn't break things. Um, it, it might be likely that it actually does break something, but um, in the end, you'll have a more secure network. So that's it for this edition of Hack Naked, T Hack Naked TV. I hope you, I hope that uh, that helped out some. I hope that um, was was informative, and I hope uh, I don't see LLMNR and NetBIOS on some upcoming pen tests. Um, if you want to see some more Hack Naked TV, check out hacknaked.tv. Uh, you can watch the always informative, always hilarious Security Weekly at blip.tv slash Security Weekly. There's the wiki for that at securityweekly.com slash wiki. I'll be speaking at the HTCIA conference on command and control testing and data exfil um, from August 30th through September 2nd. So come on down to Orlando, check that out if you want If you want to attend. We have a 15% off discount code. Uh, it's just hack naked, all uppercase, no spaces. Um, if you want to email me, my email is bo at blackhillsinfosec.com, and I am on Twitter at daptac. Talk to you later. Have a great weekend. Bye.